the cloud. Good evening. This is the West Shore Photography Club, our regular bi weekly meeting that we have. Tonight is Monday, January the 23rd, 2023. So this evening we have a, an image review and Chip Kane is going to be performing that for us. And Chip is a, uh, uh, an established and a very uh, polished photographer and really keen for doing these kind of reviews with us. Before we do that, however, I want to go through a couple of announcements that we have and some changes that came up. Uh, this Saturday on the 28th, um, at 10 o'clock, we have a trip to Strasbourg Railroad. Norbert, uh, you want to give a little bit of a brief for... Uh, yes, I can, that? Joe. Uh, yes, it, uh, I was checking the weather. It looked like we had a beautiful weather to go down. We got beautiful weather down there also. But actually, uh, there, there's two things you can shoot down there. You can shoot the outside and you shoot the inside of the museum. Uh, there's a $10 fee to get into the museum. And uh, I think seniors are $9.00. But I don't think there's any, there's no fee for the outside shooting. But anyway, there's plenty to shoot. Uh, the weather looks like it's going to be great for us outside and, of course, inside, of course. And uh, we'll, we'll meet around uh, quarter to 10, something like that, 10 o'clock in the, in the foyer or, the, or in the meeting area. And, uh, and we'll go in then. We'll go into the uh, museum at that time. Okay. Thanks, Norbert. We're going to have a, an email that'll go out um, for you also with some directions and some tips and tricks for, for that session. Our next meeting is going to be on Monday evening, February the 6th, and we're going to have a, an overview of some of the plugins that we use. And this is not going to be a how-to and tutorial type thing. It's going to be more of a um, or a, a before and after kind of a thing where we're showing what the capabilities of the plugins are and why you may want to use them. And we're going to be doing um, Topaz is uh, Denoise Sharpen and their newest entrance, the, uh, the Photo AI. Uh, we're also going to review the uh, SnapArts plugin. And we're also going to look at a, something that's relatively new, maybe many of you never heard of it, called Smart Photo Editor. And one of our members, Judy Kime, has offered to show some plugins and why she uses this uh, for her, the session. So that should be really interesting. That's a Monday evening on February the 6th. On Saturday, February the 11th, which will be the first um, meeting in our uh, in Fe in February, we're going to have a trip to Lebanon Valley College with the Edward Weston uh, trip. Uh, Mike Donovan, are you uh, online tonight to give us an overview of that? I am. Um, the images that are on display or will be on display down at um, Anvil are by Tina Madati and Edward Weston. And there's a few others sprinkled in. I believe there's a, um, a few, I can't think of offhand, but there's a couple other ones, well, really well-known photographers. The story of Edward Weston and Tina Madati going to Mexico is quite spicy. <laughs> so it's um it's a fascinating story the photography that they did there was really groundbreaking it it looks kind of normal today but back then it was it was something so the two of them hopped in a car and took off for mexico she was an actress and beautiful which is um right up his wheelhouse he always fell in love with his models and so on so the images that will be on display will be from their time in Mexico. And um, should be good, should be interesting. It's always nice to see the actual prints in right in front of your face. It's, it's really cool. So we'll um, the value of some of the stories and, and some of the background on the couple. I think they spent three or four years in Mexico together. So it, it should be a great show and, and an interesting story to boot. Mm. And it's in a really, really nice uh, art gallery too there, Lebanon Valley College. And uh, so it's a, and it's a good trip over there. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate that. 
Some other trips coming up uh, are the uh, Lancaster County Amish mud sales. We're going to be doing that one because this is where the Amish basically have a super large flea market. And so the Amish will come in and um, put their wares for sale and then walk around and do everything. We all do it. Uh, uh, sales like that, you know, drink and eat and stuff like that. And, and they're very photogenic for this. It's a really, really neat venue. And then we're going to be doing the a trip to the Mechanicsburg Model Railroad exhibit. Now, this might seem strange to you, but this is a very large model railroad and it's very photogenic in that we can have 20 people and we're going to limit it to 20 people uh, that can be in there at one time photographing and not see anybody else and they painted the walls a bluish kind of a gray so that becomes the background so you don't get a bunch of junk in the background it's it's really really cool but you'll get notices of that um, in, the, in coming up in the next month so for this evening image we have Chip Kane. Chip has been a reviewer for us for many years, and uh, has, he has very insightful comments, and each reviewer has a little bit different twist on things, and, and I think we're going to enjoy what Chip has to say. And Chip, I think we what, have 22 images tonight? That's correct. Yeah. So that makes your, and the images, the quality of the images are absolutely phenomenal tonight, and uh, that makes your job even harder, doesn't it, Chip? It sure does. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, we want to thank everybody uh, that submitted uh, for tonight. And uh, we also want to thank for, for Chip. So we have, since we have 22 images, we each, have, we, after each image, we ask the artist to give a few comments. We're going to ask that you keep those brief tonight um, because we we're going to want to run out of time. So Chip, it's all yours. If you could bring up, yes. that'll be great. Okay. We can see it just perfect. Thanks, Jim. Awesome. Okay. Um, <laughs> Joe already mentioned about, you know, I mean, they're very good. Normally, if I get a bunch of people, we have 46 people here now, so a little scary for me. Um, but often you'd want to challenge people to up their game. Uh, to make my job easier, you guys need to <laughs> lower your game a little bit because this <laughs> Really, some really amazing shots. Lots of very nice uh, photographs. So um, with that being said, I'm going to jump right in and see what we get here. Cool American Coot. And right off the bat, you see, it just is a nice shot. And so we start there and we keep going with it. And uh, when you're looking at... Um, uh, li live, uh, I wouldn't say livestock, animals, uh, you know, nature shots with, with um, images of animals in it. You, you want a bright or sharp eye. We have that. We actually have a catch light in this particular eye. And there's space for this American coot to go to, which is always important, especially when you have an animal that you know is moving somewhere. You want to give it space and not crop it off right here. So I would say kudos to the photographer for that. There are a couple of suggestions I'd like to make, and they're they're not what I would call major ones. And it's because I think the photo is well done. Cropping would be the one though, the most important one. There are a couple others I'll get to. But I want the framing first. So if you will allow me again, let me get to it. Uh, there is, um, where to go? Whoop. Now I'm going the wrong way. I need to get to, they vanished on me. Unless they're not, actually, I think that maybe, they may be shut down right at the moment. Otherwise, I'd have access to them. And, and like in the past, there's some uh, annotations that I've used, an annotation app in Zoom. That might, must be shut down, Joe. Uh, okay. I would actually show where I would be framing all these. So you just um, 
took away some of my thunder for it, but that's okay. I'll give you an idea here. If you can imagine then this line coming across just under this white spot at the top, and I would say just under the bottom bottom here, and leave leave the sides just where they're at. Don't come in any. You will take away items that aren't really important to the picture. All of this up here isn't needed. It also would require work if you're going to keep it because it's so bright. From a cropping standpoint, you save yourself some work. This would be the only highlights towards the top and maybe right here. From the aspect of highlights, though, for the bird itself, you really want to play with this, perhaps exposure. You might be able to get away with um, Lightroom is my go-to. I would just take a brush and drop down the um, highlights within that. Leave the brightness if you can. I believe the detail is probably there. We know light's coming from that direction, so it's okay that that's lighter. You just want to see some detail there. Um, outside of that, there's not a lot I would do with this photo. I really like it, other than the cropping, which I think would add strength to it. One footnote that has nothing to do with the photograph, but has everything to do with the American coot. Um, if they don't have web feet. You'll need, if you ever look up American coots, uh, mostly you'll see images of their feet because they are funky looking. That's the only way I can say it. Take a look sometime when you have time. It's it's an interesting thing. Uh, they're one of the few birds, grebes or grebs, I believe, don't have web feet either. But they're really um, big. They feel like a bird that has oversized shoes. Mm -hmm. um, but great photo. Love to hear from the photographer. Go we'll hear from the artist. Hi, it's Cami. This is uh, my photo. Thank you so much. Um, I actually got this the weekend before the uh contest when i submitted it and i actually have been playing in lightroom with the beak and brought it back brought it down a little bit um and i do agree with the, the cropping also so thank you so much you're welcome thank you thanks gammy okay tension uh <laughs> a beautiful photograph right off the bat it's you look at this and from my perspective, this is one of those that all of a sudden becomes even harder. It's like, what can you do to improve this? Uh, the photographer has done a great job with it. There are a couple of pieces from an editing standpoint that you always want to look for, I would say, and at. I'm going to point out two spots. There's some dark right here that you would want to take out and just the opposite there's a little bit of light right here that you'd want to take out just they just sort of don't belong everything else uh if i suggest something and i'm going to one more thing but i will be honest with you i would consider it nitpicking and so but i have to because these photos are so well done. And that would be, I would like to see the white not be on the edge as strong. If it's there, maybe to match this kind of intensity. So if you can carefully bring that down without showing like you've done something great. If not, the photo is not really hurt that bad by it. It's a great photograph. You know, there's other things. Um, all right, uh, real quickly, if you could, it's going to be hard, but maybe even just bringing the sharpness in on the edges and only the edges. Don't try to sharpen the whole nut there. Just use your sharpening brush or a clarity brush, which deals with the mid-range. It's amazing what that can do with a really small clarity brush. That's what I would use. But you can try to sharpen as well and right in here, and it'll make it sharper without going overboard. 
it's a, it's a great photograph. I'd love to hear from the photographer. Uh, yeah, Chip, that's uh, Rod Frazier. Uh, Hi, Rod. Yeah, it's one of those uh, supports uh, for the footbridge at Messiah University. Ah. And uh, it just kind of struck me as uh, one of those old uh, TV commercials for tension headaches. And they showed twi <laughs> twisted metal, you know, type thing. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, I appreciate your comments. I didn't even notice the, the, the little black speck and the little white speck and, and, and the other things that you mentioned. But uh, uh, yeah, I enjoyed taking it. Good, I enjoyed seeing it. I like the um, tonality of the thing. It has a nice mood. And it doesn't give me a headache. <laughs> Chip, can you, uh, before you go off, you mentioned yeah. you like the tonality of the image. Can you explain yeah. what you meant by that? Okay. Um, <laughs> yes. There is this um, uniform coloring to it that is has a bluish tint to it. And, and it's that from, from one side, to the other, right through the image itself has that tone. There's a very subtle range of color here. It's not strong, uh, two different colors that are real strong. It's basically one color with different intensities. And that's really what I mean. It's tonality is even, it's, it's color. The background matches the subject. Okay. That would be as close as I could come to really yeah. explaining that. That's good, thanks. Mm -hmm. Form reflections, uh, right off the bat, nice, sharp image, lots of color there. We've got a great red barn. Red is a difficult color. We'll see red used well again in another photo. And so we have all the detail in red, which can be lost. There's kind of a nice flow from the bottom left into the image, taking us across. And of course, we have the reflection, some nice trees. The coloring's done very well. Um, from the standpoint of being, because this is a landscape photograph, I'm going to say I think this is more universal than just me. Uh, but I always want to qualify when I know it is just me, uh, is that when you're looking at most landscape, you want a, a landscape image. You want it that way, not vertical. I would strengthen that by cropping a little bit of the top off. And I would come across just below this here, like right in there, imagine a line across the bottom, that little bit of bottom, that little bit of top don't enhance the photo in any way. But by taking those off, if you, if I had the framing um, option, you would see this uh, much better. But it will strengthen that landscape and get, feel more expansive. So I would recommend trying that. Uh, the other thing, I mentioned this line coming in here which is great. You want to strengthen that. You want to influence the viewer to do just that. The way to do that is just a little bit in here, darken this, so you leave this all the brighter and your eye doesn't go, whoops, I got off track. I got to come back and go over here. Likewise, then you're going to want to take this green in the very back behind the trees down. And I think that in itself will strengthen this image. Mm -hmm. But it's it's a great image, and I'd love to hear from the photographer. Yes, that's me, George Kurzik. Uh, thank you very much for the comments. Uh, yeah, I took this uh, about a year ago uh, in the fall uh, to... Uh, and I, I like to do lots of long exposures, typically. I like to shoot a minute and a half, two minutes with a 10 end mm. filter. But that would have taken away from the clouds. And, right. And so I, I, I just took it as it was. 
actually, I took it both ways, but I like this one better. So, <laughs> well, good choice. And real quick, like George, there are two items I just saw my notes I missed. Um, while you're at it, just clone this. My guess is it's a corrugated pipe draining in. Just take that out. Less necessary might be the lightning rods. Those certainly you expect that on a barn, but this one, uh, it's an easy fix. I would just suggest doing that. Yep, yep, good suggestion. Okay, nice photograph. Thank you very much. Crossing over. We'll make sure I'm up looking at my notes right here. Okay. Um, Right off the bat, I believe this is infrared. Uh, you know, you when you see these whites where you would expect more color, or especially in trees. Now there's no leaves, but um, the trees themselves are often white uh, in the infrared in, in that kind of range. That being said, I would actually take some of the brightness away. It might be a personal preference, but um, I think that most people want to see a little deep more detail in an item like that. And one of the dangers of infrared is it can be white and take out some of that detail. So I kind of like the effect infrared does, but I would always not just live with it. I would make it my own and reduce that whiteness a little bit. Cropping again, um, you'll hear me at different times as you already have. I believe cropping is important. And this one, there's two, I would crop it at the top. Uh, I would take it at, down right across here. I don't think you're gonna lose anything by not having that. And even more important, I would crop right to that corner or just above it. So you see no part of the corner. When you look at something like this it, and, and it gets cut off the way this has at the corner, it's almost like taking a photograph of a person and you, you know, you miss the elbow or you just got it below the elbow and there's this knobby thing sticking out. Uh, that's how I see this. And having a long line that then goes out of the picture gives just makes the picture feel longer more to it uh, that would be a piece that i would suggest outside of that um i i would leave pretty much oh no one more thing actually this is a little dark i'm not as concerned here and if you crop down here you got less and it's okay it's the bottom corner there matching the dark up here mm -hmm but you would want just a little more detail in here. Not a lot, but something to see instead of black uh, because your eye kind of wants to go in there and know what's in there when there's all this other as well. Uh, and it just the black and the white are competing without detail there. Again, though, you know, as photographs go, it, it's a nice landscape and it's interesting being infrared. And we've got this. Um, tell me if you can see if I do this at least. Can you see it blow up? Yes. OK, good, because I might use that a little more. You've got this old style pickup here, um, which is just really nice. It just and you can see it's moving. It's coming toward us and just a nice photograph. Who's the photographer? Uh, this is uh, Dennis Baker's photograph. He's not here wow. with us tonight. And this was his uh, attempt with a infrared filter on his iPhone. I think we all know he's been very active in the iPhone uh, world recently. And uh, so he put a filter on the front of his iPhone and he took this image and wanted to share it with a group to get the comments just like you had, Chip. Okay. All right. Thank you, Joe. And Chip, I can just, oh. just to comment, I want to say it's 7.24. And so, oh. <laughs> okay, just wanted to let you know. I got that. Okay, thanks. Okay, um, the tricky spiral shot. This is the first of the wow pictures to me that I saw. Now, all of them up to this point, I thought were really nice. This one, 
is just a beautiful photograph. I love the line that takes it and the white that brings it up and around. It's like, you can't plan those things <laughs> unless you're sitting there and, and, and you're seeing this come up and, and you snap it. I mean, maybe you've taken a bunch of shots and picked the best. Either way, you've picked the best. It's great. You've got all these feet planted you, and then all of a sudden you've got these in the air. And we know there's four feet, but you've got a nice triangle right here along with the curve that actually almost could be considered a triangle in itself. I mentioned red before with the barn. This red, there's a lot of red, which means there would have been a lot to go wrong in my mind. And yet you've been able to separate the different reds very, very well. And there's detail enough in here that this is a beautiful shot. And I will tell you, there's only one thing I would mention, and I'm going to use the word, it's very nitpicky. <laughs> so I'm going to, right here, that little light spot, <laughs> I would just clone that out. And I know that's nitpicky. Um, so I would leave that to the photographer to decide whether it's worth it or not. Um, it's just that's something that I would do. Beautiful photograph. Whose is it? Dan Olson, I think. Are you with us tonight? Uh, Rick, this is Dan's image. Is that correct? It's actually George Ryan. George Ryan. I'm sorry, George. I nice. had muted myself. I'm sorry. Uh -uh. Uh, can you can you hear me? Yes, we, we can. can. I, I, you were right, Chip. I, 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 when I take uh, pictures of a basketball game, I come home with around 600 because my camera's on, uh, on burst. And then I sure. go through and I winnow them down to about 40, uh, which I really like. And then I send them to the coach who then sends them to the players. And cool. this was one of the ones I really liked. There's a reason to like this one. This is very nice, George, in every way. I, 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 and and I hope you got the double entendre, tricky spiral shot. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the person awesome. shooting it may have been doing a tricky spiral shot too. Right. <laughs> thank you for your, thank you for your kind comments, Chip. I appreciate it. You're welcome. This was excellent. Okay, second one, two in a row. Just wow. Beautiful photograph. This one versus more singular colors of red and white. This one's got mm -hmm. all kinds of colors and beautiful tones in these pots. The lines within this uh, are, are just amazing. I mean, you've got these nice ones here, they're here, and then these upturned lids that just add a different kind of line. These continue down and then you've got this awesome curve in here where the two openings you uh, you know it's like saying hey could you put those lids over there for me uh, they were just so perfectly aligned i love the color it's sharp having the individual there uh, the difference between that versus a shot without this person um there would be no comparison. It's like it, the other would have been a nice photograph. This is just an outstanding image. And I only have one very nitpicky thing. And this one is even less um, uh, important than that little white spot in the other photo. I would turn around and clone this out and match, just match this coloring right there. It's just not enough of it to keep it in. Cropping it over a little just creates all kinds of problems. So better to just clone that out. A beautiful photograph. And I'd be really interested to hear where you were at when you took this as well. Chip, thank you for the uh, comments. This is Joe Farrell. I struggle with the cropping of that. And your comment about the bottom right-hand corner is something I'm gonna do. 
and I appreciate that. This was in uh, Vietnam, and those are, this is soy sauce that they're making, and the lady was stirring that, and uh, she looked up and smiled, and then she put her head back down, but she didn't have a hat on. So we went and got her a hat. Oh. <laughs> we're in someone's house now. We're on the second floor, and she put it on. And uh, so that's that hat was something that was important to me. Yes, and, it was absolutely. Yeah. So thank you. Appreciate your comments. Yeah, it's a beautiful photograph. All right, the train has left the station. Obviously, we have no train here, um, but we have benches, which adds some. Uh, texture within the photo, besides all of the details that's going on in here. And we talk about a photo and there's always that brightness against the dark. And we hear, I know you've heard plenty, um, you know, something white's going to take her eye that way. This lighter takes her eye right past the benches and we don't get, we don't pause. So, at the very least, you'd want to tone this down. Take, take, drop the exposure on that. I would take it a fair amount down. You don't want it black by any means. We know there's light back there, so you want to keep that semblance of light, but darken it. Same way, you just darken, just blacken these windows. That little spot, I would take the reflection out personally uh, and darken those up. Just make them black they're not adding to the photo. I would have wished, um, and maybe there's other photos you have as a photographer of this where you have stepped back further and have the feet of that bench. Uh, they just, it's like, again, taking a picture of someone standing there and you've cut their feet off. It would have been a stronger image with those feet there. But you've done some nice work. The lighting in here is well done. We get to see it. I struggled with telling you to get down lower than you did because you're already all, all but at bench level. But then you would lose the seat and you'd be looking up under it. And, and so that wasn't going to work. It's a nice photograph. I just think it could be stronger with, with the feet there. Love to hear who the photographer is. Hi, Chip. It's Elaine Shook. Thanks for your feedback. Um, I uh, I wish I could have gotten those feet in there. Unfortunately, I was standing and taking the shot over kind of a knee wall. I wonder. So yeah. I, I could not get the entire bench in there. And certainly getting down lower wouldn't have helped any. Um, no. This, this shot was originally intended as a part of my abandoned benches collection, yeah. which I was kind of focused on in the height of COVID. But when I took the shot, it, it occurred to me that um, this is more about the passing times and change than it is about abandonment for me. That uh -huh. building in the background is the Wilbur Chocolate Factory. I was going to ask you that. I, um, which is no longer a chocolate factory, but yet they left the name of it on there. So you can see the first half of the first three letters of that name. So to me, this photo is just, is, is just as much about um, the iconic institution and the history of the town of Lidditz. And the fact that even though this is no longer a um, train station, that history it's still there and Wilbur will always be an icon um, there right. and the brightness of that building kind of, to me, kind of notes that, that it, it, it will never be a dark spot. It is a little bit bright. Yeah, that's true. And I agree that it does take your eyes right past that, the benches. So um, in the end, that building was more important to me than the benches. Okay. All right, that's why it's always nice to hear from the photographer and what their intent was. Well, thank, so thank you. you. Thank you for your comments. Mm -hmm. Diamond in the rough. <laughs> Diamond Rio. I saw this picture and the first thing hit my mind. Um, now I'm going to date myself here, but there's a song, Riding the Storm Out, <laughs> by the band Diamond Rio. Uh, 
which they got their name from the trucks. So what can I say? But uh, I I love this photograph. The coloring is really nice. It's sharp. It's actually angled very well. Uh, it's not square on from that uh, the writing. So you, it kind of flows off from the right to the left, which is all really nice. It also creates a couple of problems, not big ones. Uh, I would crop it right here just so you don't see that little vent opening. I think that's what they are on the vehicles. Uh, it just kind of stops at the picture to me. By cropping it here, we, we just get the image that's going to keep going. The other piece, way less important to me, is I would attempt to take this and straighten it up just take this out by doing that. There's no way you can crop it or you might be able to tilt the image a little, but then I think you lose exactly where this needs to be and the right angle to take it on out of the photo. Again, it's I that may be personal preference. I'd suggest though playing with it and see if it works for you. Everything else is really nice. Rust is always interesting. And there's plenty of it. I love the title, Diamond in the Rough. Uh, it, it works very well with this. And so another great image. Who's the photographer? Uh, hi, Chip, uh, Kurt Wilkie. Um, yeah, I played with crop and this, I shot this really wide. So I had a lot, a lot mm. of photograph to crop. And I, I know I wanted tension on the right so that it, so that that the uh, Rio, the O kind of looked like it was really tight to the crop edge. So the yeah. broken part looked like it told a story, so to speak. Um, yeah, cropping was my was my big thing. I just I played with cropping this so many times. Uh, but yeah, thanks for your comments and uh, and I'll see what that crop looks like. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. and it's not so much a crop. Are you familiar with how to straighten in Lightroom? Yes, I am. That's what I would try here. I would try it there with one line going this way. Don't I wouldn't add to the others. You don't want to change those too much. And it should pull that up. And you wouldn't yeah. see this. And it'd just be this going across. And I love your comments on your intentionality of keeping this towards that edge. Because I think you're spot on there. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ties to the past. Okay, uh, we we see what uh, my guess is are ice skates. They could be roller skates. I'm not an expert on that, uh, but they certainly take us to a different time. Uh, they have age in them. We can see the various markings that tell us that. But the um, again, I'm going to use that word tonality. The coloring where there is color is more uniform and it's muted. And I always, uh, personally, I tend to lean towards uh, the muted uh, colors and that kind of tonality. It just adds an age to it. So it appears intentional, uh, not just that you have a yellow light on it. Uh, with this though, we know to a point what they are. Again, I think they are ice skates, they seem lean. Uh, which ice skates tend to be. But we also, at least I do, again, feel like I want to see that. But I keep thinking, what's the photographer thinking? This may well be the subject. So what do you need that for? There's an argument there both ways. Uh, I don't know. I'd like to see two versions of it to say that. But that is what stands out in this photo, these beautiful lines and this beautiful color. And it kind of fades off into with the shoe down here, which I think works and keeps that stronger, a little bit of orange in here that just makes it stand out. Uh, how you place that, those laces is perfect on it. 
I wouldn't crop it in any way the way it is. Uh, I might want to see a version with the, the whole shoes as well. But I'd love to hear from the photographer. Uh, Chip, it's Mary Fox. <clears throat> hey. Uh, uh, thank you for the comments. I um, did this self-imposed project on their ice skates. You were right. They were my old ice skates from way, way back. So they're kind of like an antique now. But I have like, hundred versions of these skates and there are some with the blades in it and everything so um i didn't want to put any i, I just wanted this one because i just like the way the ties laid and i like where the they were leaning against each other so that's why that picture was chosen okay and i don't disagree with that really either um i kept struggling because if you saw the whole right the, the skates then all of a sudden that other part goes further back uh-huh and well, there's you, a you've chosen of and it, make it stand out. You've done that, and it's certainly beautiful lines in it in the laces. So well done. Thank you, Chip. You're welcome. That's mellow. Very nice natural photograph. It's not posed. This guy's sitting here, and you've captured a moment. And it feels nice just seeing this guy. I mean, it's an incredibly short. Trumpet, I guess that's called. Um, someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but it would be something if I was walking down the street, I'd go, oh, cool. And I'd like to capture it. And I think you've framed it well for this image. You don't need anything else in the image but this guy and what he's doing with that trumpet. So well done there. That being said, because it's just him, you want it to be just him, all right? So darken this down so it's not taking us off somewhere or just clone some of that over on top of it so it's all leaves there. Parsley and sage. That would be the one. There, This is bright. I would darken it so it's closer. We know the sunlight's coming that way. Everything's telling us that. But this, it's just too bright. Maybe taking the highlights down will be enough. You'd want to play with that. I would probably take the whole exposure and bring it all down just a little bit. Maybe not as dark as this, but close. Because it's, it's just not adding to the photo. When we talk about light, uh, this, this guy's holding a very shiny trumpet. So we've got some unusual lighting right here under his sunglasses, little reflection in the glasses. And I would want to work on that lighting just a little bit. It's going to be tough. You'll want to just blow it up, use a small brush and try to, I would start with reducing highlights. I don't think I would use exposure there at first, but it, it feels too bright compared to the rest of his face in here. We know the sun's hitting there. That's okay. This isn't the sun other than the reflection. So I'd change that. And maybe, I'm going to blow it up a little bit here. Maybe you'd want to darken that to match more. Uh, I don't think that's, I'm not, I wouldn't be hardcore even with myself on that. I'd do both ways and go, oh, which one works best? And then choose which one works best for me. I would try that for you. Nice photograph, nice capture of a moment. Who's the photographer? That's from me, and it's Mary Eileen Carson. Mary Eileen. Thank you for your comments. I will, uh, I will apply those little, Little, I mean, you know, they're not big, but yeah, it's, I, I can uh, see where they, they can be distracting and I'd like to correct them. Thank you. Well, where was this taken? Capona, last fall, Capona. Uh, um, okay. he's, he's sitting at the end of the uh, Walnut Street Bridge on the city side, on the front street side. All right, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Leaving, wow. Another um, great photograph, you see it and it's like, oh, wow. And it, the 
I've got to use that word again, Joe, tonality. There, there's this uniform um, color. It's not a straight black and white. Uh, there's a yellowing to it, which gives a sense, it can give a sense of age. Here, it sort of gives a sense of mystery. And the guy standing there certainly does on the other side. Beautiful, leaving this all dark and yet in the picture. For me, I you wouldn't want to crop that in short. This just adds to that mystery that I think is here in the photo. There is nothing I would suggest to improve this photo. Uh, I, I, lo I looked, honest. <laughs> I don't even have a nitpick for it on the image itself. I do have a nitpick for the title. And you guys have heard me talk about titles before. Leaving. I don't see it. I see a guy that's coming toward me. I see what looks to be doors that close toward me. Both of these would come in towards the viewer to close. There's an opening right in here for that and the same on this side. And so he feels like he's outside coming in. That's why the title doesn't work for me. Uh, I don't have a title for you. I don't like the name people's works anyway, but I, I would work at something else, but it's a beautiful photograph and done just right. So who's the photographer? Hi, this is Chris Jewett. Uh, this is yeah. an unusual photograph for me and I'm usually doing still lifes, but hmm. uh, I was, out with a friend of mine, fellow photographer at a deserted crab house on the Eastern shore of Maryland, Meredith and Meredith, I think of the name. That's a section of the building where there's just a bunch of deserted little rooms. Uh, and so I was standing out, I, I was gonna go to my 1960s music roots and call this house of four doors, the one I'm standing in plus the uh -huh. three. <laughs> but uh, that wasn't, Leaving was only because he's coming out of the kitchen area there. Uh, uh, but the other thing is, is I, if, if I may, I was also going to, I was toying with something more in the terms of the apparition because I wanted to give him kind of a ghostly look. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he's not really there. Uh, that, that's, I, I blended him in from another photograph. He's actually got his hand on a tiller of a crab boat. <laughs> oh nice so, sorry I, I i i i used the term photoshop and i guess i photoshopped him into the photo uh but photoshop is the photographer's dark room and if ansel can do it i can do it well that's exactly right and what i would say is in photoshop you created you created an image and you've done it very well but i uh, appreciate your comments and uh i kind of throw it in there because it was inspired by another photographer named Fran Fro Foreman, who does these kinds of images. But uh, anyway, thank you so much. Uh, I didn't think it was going to be so, get such quite rave reviews. Appreciate it. <laughs> I think it's great. Thank you. Bye-bye. Or bye-bye. You're still here. Hold on. <laughs> Let's move on. Nature or Native American statue. And obviously that's what it is. It's, it's a simple statement and that part works. It's an interesting photograph when I look at it. It we've got a exactly what it says, this Native American statue that is very well done as a statue goes, bronze and then colored in. Lots and lots of detail. I would love to be able to go up and see this image in person because I'm sure there's even more here than what we could expect to see. So I, I, it's not like you missed something. I don't believe you did. I, I think you've captured as well as it can be. The background, I love the coloring. I love the tonality of it. It, it again is more this uniform, subtle colors. And at first I was thinking that the background was added in after, you know, as, as a backdrop. However, we've got what I think may be 
crab apples or something like it on the statue itself as well as all around which tells me that would have been a lot harder to add in on top of it it could be done but i don't think that's what happened i just think you've chosen to make the lighting of the statue more uh, i want to use the word stark uh, that sounds might sound negative it's not intended to be just bringing that more to the forefront than the rest of the image uh, so it's done well. I would like to see maybe some of the lighting here that's coming from up above just softened a little. And I think maybe taking the um, just a little bit, the highlights down. And, and I wouldn't do it uh, with a uniform slider. I'd always use a brush just in here, especially in the face. I'm, I'm okay with the rest of it. But I love the photo and I'm real curious where it was taken as well. So who's a photographer? No one? Rick, can you tell us who the photographer is? Yeah, this is Joan Smith. I'm not sure if she's on tonight. Oh, I'd like to have heard. Um, it's a nice image. Okay. Bubbles, lots and lots and lots of bubbles. And also another, uh, a, a more bright photo. It seems even brighter because we've just come across a couple that were darker. And, and I always have to tell myself that when I'm reviewing them back to back to back to back. And so at first it's like, oh, it's too bright. But no, it's not. I think it's as bright as you, it should be. I wouldn't want to darken it really it because it just adds to it there's lots going on in the bubbles kind of uh just these different colors and shapes i think we might see i believe i that this is a child space right here uh, which just adds to the um fun of the image and we've got these hands reaching out who doesn't want in a massive bubble put your hands into it uh either push them or see how many pop as soon as you touch it. It's interesting from a capture standpoint because you're, you're where that individual is. And I don't feel like you're standing way over and looking down. More like my head is seeing my hands out there with the um, bubbles. So I, I, I think the perspective's good. Uh, I would probably want to crop a little, just a little bit in here, especially because I feel like you want to crop it right here to bring this in. It doesn't have to be equally matched here, but this isn't as interesting. And so keep the interest in the image, crop it here, and then you're going to want to crop down somewhere in here that works to make sense for you. I looked at the hands and I kept looking at them and I know this is a child. So the photographer can correct me if I'm wrong, but I kept feeling like these were, um, uh, what's the word? They work with a lot of, a lot of faces that luminance um, smoothing, uh, if you will. I don't think that's the exact word I'm looking for, but they feel like they've been softened or smoothed even though I know that I believe, or at least I believe they're child's hands. Uh, I would like to see less of that. Now, if it's a child's hands and it's just the way it is, great, leave it alone, don't touch it. Um, interesting and fun photograph. I'd love to hear from the photographer. Hey, Chip, uh, Don Uvic, how you doing? Hey, Don, been a while. Yeah, it has been. Um, spot on with your comments and uh, is regarding the uh, the hands, uh, yeah, I, I I over topazed. I think I, I just got topaz about two weeks ago and uh, was trying uh, trying it out, and I totally agree with you. I'd go back to the shot that I had without uh, putting it in topaz. Um, yep, cropping. I totally agree with you. I, I I shot this in Washington Square Park in New York. Uh, 
they have quite a few individuals there. I uh, had a whole series of shots. It was uh, basically, uh, I, I feel it with the gentleman who had made the bubbles with his wand was almost like a composer um, because there were mm. kids running around, popping the buzzle bubbles and uh, the perspective is correct. I was able, since I'm taller than child was, I was able to take that particular photograph. So your observations were correct. Um, I think I will definitely take your suggestions uh, at heart and uh, and make them to improve the image. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. It's a fun image. Oh, great. Refinery. Um, that's exactly what it is. You don't need to change the title. You haven't tried to add anything in the title that we don't need. It's just there. The refinery itself is, is nice and sharp. It's really sharp right in here. And that's part of the main piece. There's a lot going on in this photo, though, a whole lot. There's lines going everywhere. And I'm, I'm a very graphic person, so I love lines. But lines can fight each other as well. And this image has a lot of those lines that are fighting it. We've got cross, all these cross areas in here and in here. I mean, we expect this, this squaring there, it's, it's a fence of some kind, but it just sort of gets in the way, these in here, which makes it difficult when you're taking a picture, something like this, and you've got a fence in the way, what do you do? First thing is, in my uh, my first reaction would be to step into the picture, put that lens through the fence if you can. Uh, you don't always get that chance. And then frame the shot and take it. I'm not sure the fencing, well, actually, I'm pretty sure the fencing isn't adding here. It's It's getting in the way of what might be a very interesting image. It's... It's just a lot to struggle there. And then there's all these little things like this in here fighting each other. We've got a bird with the part of the fence blurred out with the, the smokestack belongs there. The others don't. Um, same way down here. And, and these seem like little things. But when you're looking at a picture like this, uh, it's all these things that keep adding up that um, line going through right where this is. It's like, darn, I'd like to see this clearer. Coloring's good. Uh, you know, I think the contrast for it is just about right. Sometimes black and white can be over contrasted. Uh, this is outside daylight. We, we expect it feels natural in its um, contrast. So in that, I think you've done well. If I if there wasn't a fence, I would be suggesting you know cropping this. Uh, and we've got this piece that I wished it was a little lower, so I'd say crop here. But at least you'd want to crop right above it here. It's not needed. Um, I don't know if you have a chance to go back to try this again. I'd recommend it. I think there's a lot here to take photos of. Um, be interested who the photographer is. Rick, can you tell us who took that job? It is <clears throat> Andy Amico, I think. Okay. I guess not here. All right. We'll move on. America's Street Drench. Um, a lot going on here as well. There's a lot of strong imagery in the bottom half of the picture from the middle down. And that's where our eye mostly wants to go. It's, it's New York. Uh, it, it's a, always a busy place right here. Uh, I mean, we get to see where it's at, you know, in Pershing Square Plaza, Grand Central Terminal. And that makes me want to suggest cropping it here. Except uh, that might be if you're there, how to crop it there. I think it's New York. 
we know there's tall building buildings and and you've done you've captured it here i think you could get away with capturing it by cropping it right in here now that creates a problem that we'll talk about but you'll have right above here you have buildings reaching up and the others we know go beyond it as well so you still get a sense of depth because this is further back and height with without having all of this in the way of the photo that keeps fighting top bottom cropping there the problem is this clone it out that one i don't think would be hard at all to take out and then you will create a much stronger image uh but otherwise you know i think you've done well you've got the spacing right in here and you're right in the street maybe you were outside dodging traffic uh, if you were inside a vehicle uh, there's no sense of it that i can tell really on the windshield uh, it's a nice image i like it uh, i like new york city it's always an interesting place to go when i see these i go Darn, I haven't been there. Last time I was there was December 2019, right before COVID hit. And I'm ready to go back. So uh, who's the photographer? Yeah, it's Rich Scar. Hi, Chip. Hey, Rich. Um, yeah, I, I this was a picture that I was not going to spit, submit with it, but I kept coming back to this picture. I took it a while ago, maybe a year ago. Um, and I think it's because it, it's a shot. I, I, I tend to like busy shots. I, it's a shot of why I love New York City and why I think others hate it. <laughs> so I want I wanted I did submit it for purposely to see what you would do uh do with it. And I, I agree with it. And I did actually I wasn't at my age particularly I'm not foolhardy enough to sit in the middle of 42nd Street and take this shot in the rain, <laughs> whatever. So I did shoot it through a windshield and I was lucky to get it clear enough with a little bit of topaz, but not, not too much. I didn't have to do much with it because I didn't know what to do with it. So but anyways, I like it. Thanks for your comments. I agree with them. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing. <laughs> All right. Lucid Dream. And title tells us right off the bat that you know we're in a dream state of some kind. And this is a very, um, I'll, I'll use the word dreamy. I, I'm not sure I'm seeing that exactly, but I understand the intent. Uh, that being said, uh, structurally, this photograph, um, I think it can be strengthened. I would crop it here. You don't need this right in here. I would probably crop it just past the thin tree so we see the other side and know it's there. Now, you, there's argument to go within it. And I'd like to see both versions to tell you which would be which. Uh, just because you you want a frame here. And this one just doesn't do it. This one's straighter and cleaner. And bring it in just a little bit more. You want to crop some of that top off. It's not needed. This is just kind of like noise. Uh, but the image itself, we're looking at water flowing into a bigger expanse. And so you do have this leading line, which is always good to have in a photograph. So well done there. To strengthen that leading line. Again, you want to take away what either blends with the leading line or causes your eye to get off track or off the path. And I would darken these. If you darken this, you got to darken this side just to make it more natural and uniform and all of this, and your line would come out into it. If you have opportunity to go back and do this, two things. One, I would get lower down. Make the, get down on your, on your knees, on your haunches, you know, on your, on your, your hiney, if you will, I would probably be tempted to do something that low and shoot out. And then you will get this leading line leading even more. The other thing, which will be harder to do, this tree here, 
there's too much to say, hey, clone that out. But it's a younger tree. I will never suggest to anybody break it off. But if it's if it's pliable enough, you you could move it out of the way, bend it, hold your foot on it, have a friend hold it off out of the way, uh, because it's kind of stopping the eye and and moving it if you have that opportunity. Uh, but as itself strengthen it here here and here um, i'm not sure you know lucid dream uh, Im implies to me that there probably was a, there may even be a preset or something called lucid dream I, in the back of my mind i'm thinking there is and i'm not i don't know whether that's what you used or not um, but i'm curious if that's not it what was the reason for the title I don't think it's a bad title. I'm just curious. So I'd love to hear from the photographer. It's Chuck Kilburn. I'm not sure if he's on tonight. I don't think Chuck oh. is. Okay. All right, well, we'll move on. They put the photos in. They're not on. Woody's hiding. Oh, I don't think I have ever seen so many wood ducks. <laughs> Uh, especially males. There's actually four here, one immature over here, and then you've got the three mature ones here, and a couple of females. It's nice and sharp. It's a, it's there's a lot going on, and yes, they are hiding. That, I mean, so the title works with what's here. I kept trying to think though, what am I looking at? Where am I supposed to look? Yeah. I can tell you where I want to look. I want to look over here. These are the two. And, and I love the fact that the, it's a pair there. It's not two males or something like that. And, and But then all of a sudden, yes, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. You know, and this one gets lost a little. And this one as well. And when I first was looking at this, I'll share with you yeah, that I was looking at it on a laptop. And at that, on the laptop, I, I was like, this isn't working. When I brought it up onto my 32 inch monitor um, on there, it gave more space. And I'm like, well, that's better. I won't say it's perfect, but it's better. I still would suggest, um, I can't find where you'd exactly crop this to make this work. Uh, and, and it's not something you can go back and go, oh, they're still there. I'll take another picture. They're going to be gone. Uh, if you get another opportunity, um, try to take it. I think it's great capturing them because, first of all, it's, it's a documentary photo, if nothing else. So look at how many of these wood ducks I saw here. But also try to find one that has a subject that really stands out. I mean, you could crop in close here, but then it's not as interesting. A little bright, but not much in, in the foreground or in the front here, but barely. So you can play with that or not, if you will, or want. Um, still an interesting photograph. I love wood ducks, love seeing them. They're just a beautiful bird. Curious who the photographer is. Thank you, Chip. This is Dick Messner. Mid-October to mid-November, the wood ducks are on Sherman's Creek right at my house. Oh. And every morning nice. about quarter after eight to 8.30, two bald eagles would fly up the creek and the wood ducks would just run for the treetops oh. that were on the edge. It took me 12 mornings before I got them settled down enough I could get this this photograph. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I've never seen that many together before. Oh, evidently you you get them, I don't know about in mass, but you see every, every fall. Every October, mid-October to mid-November, they're down there quite a few at a time. I would say on an average morning, I've got at least two dozen. Wow. Well, then you have you do have chances to grab some with that stand out. Just some of them. I mean, that's what I'd love to see. But 
it's interesting to see him here and even more so to hear the story of the Eagles. Well, all right. Um, let's move on. Chip, it's um, it's um, after eight. So just to okay. give it, and we, we don't have a problem going longer, but I just wanted to let you know. We'll, we'll keep it moving. Okay, old candle making shop. And I looked at this photo and I'm like, nice. It's, it's the lighting in there is nice. Um, we know the light coming in through the window and obviously maybe a door off off scene to the right uh, coming in is going to give a soft light based on how this is. There are no sharp shadows. There's some shadows, but they're not sharp. So the fact that it's not high contrast works here. Uh, some people I think might be tempted to do that. I'm glad this photographer didn't do something more like an HD kind of effect. I think this is more natural. It's wide. I get to see a lot here. There's a lot going on and there's nothing overly dark. There is nothing overly bright and there's a lot to look at and just think about or to consider on and everywhere in this photo. So it's a very, very nice photograph. <clears throat> Something the photographer has no control over initially in taking the picture is, well, you have an electric light here. I'm like, I understand they need that. Um, you know, but it's like, darn. If it's possible, if your skill's there, you might want to try to take that out because it's just unfortunate if it was sitting there without this crossing over, this kind of a convergence going on, uh, it wouldn't be as bad. But because it is there, it it sort of fights. It's the only place. It's not a major thing. Uh, but if you could, I would recommend trying to clone that all out. Uh, looks like it might be somewhere, maybe Bedford Village or something like that. Um, nice photograph. I'd love to hear from the photographer. Hi, this is Raymond. Okay. Uh, can you all hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay. So this is at Surrey, Surrey Brook. In, that is in Frederick. Maryland. Oh. So I went over there. I prefer to go there. And I snapped this shot and the requirements that was taken with the HDR. Reason being is with the window there. It was coming in so right. bright. You couldn't uh, see it's outside. Interesting. <laughs> so I had to use the HDR and kind of mask that brightness. Then you did well. And when then when I went home, yeah. And then when I went home, I played with the lighting. I had the light bulb, and like you had mentioned, there was a that. So thank you. Okay. And where in Frederick is this? It's out of Frederick. It's west west of Frederick. Place called right. Surrey. S U R R E Y. Brooke. Oh, there was a place that close. Nursery. Glad to know. So it, it's hey. an old candle shop. Again, they have classes there. And okay. All right. Thank you. Did I get the right? Yeah. Okay. Point of no return. Um, another interesting, very, this one's a very graphic uh, photograph. We've got lots of lines. We've got the leading lines clearly taking us to and beyond. It's strengthened by the lines here. And I love the fact that they're contrasting lines. We've got this dark and this light going on. We've got these opposite um, lines going vertical versus horizontal back down like railroad tracks would. Um, so there, there's a contrast there in the kind of lines, and they're not fighting each other. They're not crossing. They're 
enhancing. And so I, I think that's good. There's some nice lighting going on here. We can see all the way through the image. Nothing, even this, I'm fine with. I don't feel like there's anything too bright. If this wasn't here, perhaps I would be saying, I'd darken that down some. But no, it it the eyes just allow, takes them both in and takes us through. So it's a nice photograph. I would not crop it in any way. Uh, I mentioned there is detail in here. If you're going to keep the title, I would lessen the detail. I would darken it down because it doesn't feel like they're going somewhere of no return. It just looks like they're going somewhere. Uh, I don't know where this is. If you you can actually see another person here in a bookcase. Get back here. I don't want to make everybody's eyes go crazy. Uh, so I might be tempted to suggest darking that down so they're they really are going to some unknown place and and could possibly not return. It's just with that there, it feels like they're just visiting something. But that's the only thing I could suggest from a, a, a framing, a structural lighting, nice black and white, it's kind of grainy, I sort of like that as well with this. And that would add to it if it was dark as well and further back. Nice phonograph, love to hear from the photographer. Hey Chip, um, Dave Marchetto, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Hey, um, thanks so much. I really appreciate those comments. Uh, the title of this should be the uh, the unprepared photographer. I was leaving the museum <laughs> with my camera on manual by my side. Everybody's rushing to the door, and I was realizing I had probably a photograph there. <laughs> and uh, before I knew it. It was like going, going, gone, and that was the end of it. I, I wasn't even sure what I captured, so it was uh, it was fun to crop and you know get the best out of it that I that I could. I, uh, I I had a lot of fun with this one. Good. Well, you certainly cropped it well. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Lighting. You're welcome. Okay, Ghost Ranch. Uh, we're certainly seeing a lot going on here as well. Landscape. We've got Joshua Trees going on. In fact, my guess is this is Joshua Tree National Park, partly because there are Joshua Trees that grow in other places besides that national park. But the national park has rocks like this. Some of the other places, and I'm sure there's some I don't know about that do have these rocks, but I, places like Death Valley, I know there's Joshua Trees. You're not gonna find rock like that there. Uh, that being the case, though, it's a place right away you go, oh, I want to go there because it it's very interesting. And you're starting to capture some of that interest to strengthen the interest. Um, again, landscape, having it nice in that landscape format and making it feel expansive. One of the ways to do that is to lose a lot of the foreground. If you have too much foreground, everything feels too far away. And it's like, oh, I got to walk however far to get there. It seems like too much trouble. So I would crop right in here, somewhere in here anyway, maybe here. Now you got a little bit of that road that I'd darken down if you crop here, just a little. And, but I'm seeing beyond that, I'm actually seeing three photographs. One of them is just that, this in here. I think you have a stronger photograph by cropping it here. And now you've got a, the two sets of trees and you've got the two sets of stone. Now, we know this isn't stone stone like this, but they do mirror each other in a fashion. And it's so you have two sets of pairs. There's nothing odd numbered about it, and that can add strength sometimes. And we'll get to the third photograph with that one. The third is this right here. We got one, two, three, two and an odd. And 
these would kind of frame in the structure here. So there's a lot, a lot of pictures, even within this, just by cropping, I would play around with doing that. Uh, it's hard to say how sharp these really are here. If you're cropping in this close, can you get away with that? Maybe, the photographer will know. This in here is just not adding anything. It just kind of stops the eye. We wander around in here. Oh, oh yeah, I want to go over there. So you'd want to do that. Uh, from a technical editing standpoint, I'll use that. You want to watch, um, most likely these are dust spots. That happens. Uh, you'll see some in here. You would want to clone those out. If you're keeping this, you want to clone those out as well. There's one up here. There's a couple of here. One up here. Uh, you get the idea. And, and in Lightroom, there's a way to see those spots. And then you can take care of them pretty easily without hurting the photo in any way. It's still a nice photograph. Um, I just think your real photograph is at least here and up. And again, You've got three out of this one image. And then you can play with it from there. I'd love to hear from the photographer. This is Steve Schneid. Hi, Steve. Schneiden? Yeah, I don't think Steve's with oh, us tonight. Yeah. Is he not here? No. Darn. Okay. All right. Lakeside sigh. So I take the word sigh as in ha, ah, relax. That's how I interpreted that um, with this photo because that's certainly a place I'd want to go sit. Uh, I, you know, we can see pinch apart, sit there. And yeah, it's like let all the trials of the day or the week just slough off of us as we sit there and enjoy this foggy scene which for whatever reason fog tends to just sort of let people mellow a little bit or enjoy it in some way so i think the title's right i think there's some nice imagery here um, within this image there are a couple of cropping um, suggestions. I would suggest not a lot, but just above the stone that's probably extension or from the parking area or something like that. Just cut that out. It's not adding to the photo. It actually kind of stops it as soon as you get started. And I would play with um, cropping it without the tree. If you want the tree, which I, I, I think there's argument for it. Uh, there's argument for both ways, which I'm suggesting both. I would be cropping it down in here somewhere. This, let the tree frame the one side. We don't need that. And um, maybe even uh, cropping in here. Don't worry about seeing the top of the tree because that's not your subject. You just wanna know, oh, there's trees there, I'm outside. And I really want to sit here. So let the viewer go there by taking away some of this extraneous in here. Um, it's nice. There's just a hint of pink. Uh, tell me, and because fog as well, it's probably morning. And, you know, as the light's coming in. But it's a nice capture. It's a place I want to go. So thank you to the photographer for letting me think, oh, I want to go there. And it's not that far away, as long as I get up early enough. Um, I'd love to hear who the photographer is. Hi, uh, Susan Osolowski, my first time with the group. And uh, thanks. Yeah. Is that okay? Can you guys hear me? Yep. All right, I'm going to try that again. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Um, uh, that was actually at sunset and uh, the fog just came in as I arrived. It was pretty magical. Uh, I love the suggestions. I thank you. And 
I know that it's got some potential and I'd love to try the um, ideas that you gave me for it. So thanks so much. Oh, thank you for submitting. And it, it always makes me laugh when I guess something like morning and it's evening. <laughs> but it's a very nice photograph. So thank you, Susan. Okay, last one, Storm on the Danube. Nice, interesting um, image structurally. We have like half and half with this line going down. So we've got a triangle on the top, triangle on the bottom, triangle going in here. And it's just all these lines are kind of lining up in the right place. Looks like we're on the river, but we're going down. If that's the case, the photographer captured this at the right spot. You don't want to be any further down. That would move this image more toward the center and not here where everything's leading in to the structures. Uh, so well done. It's framed well as, as well. I, I don't think I, I kept playing with croppings. Do I want to lose a little bit on the top? Maybe. Uh, that would be the place I would crop if you're going to crop. And I'd play with that. Um, I'm not sure uh, which would be stronger because they're pretty well balanced this way, triangle to triangle. Cropping it may destroy that. Interesting image. Would like to go there. Anybody seeing this, I believe, would like to go there. I certainly would. Uh, it seems to be like it might be an evening uh, with the sun coming in low behind the photographer, which adds a certain tonality to the uh, coloring of that hill and the um, structures themselves, the buildings, they all are in that same color ranges again. But, and this may be preference, uh, and so I want to couch it in that way. It feels a little yellow to me. Now, I know it might be evening, the lights behind us, and that has a strong, uh, it can bring that, the yellows in at the time of day. But I'd like to see a little less. I think that might bring out a little more detail in the stone church itself because I certainly would like to see that. If you keep the color, um, I would very lightly take a brush and just add in a little black. That would be my suggestion. Uh, there's other ways you could do it. You could drop the highlights, but then you're taking the light off the building somewhat. I don't think I'd do that. I would add the blacks in by bringing the blacks down and just painting it in here at least to try to bring in that and maybe there and here. Um, it's a nice photograph. Uh, Storm on the Danube, the tidal work, we clearly see the clouds telling us that it's a strong possibility of rain. So I'd love to hear from the photographer. Thanks for sending, submitting it. <laughs> Rick, can you tell us who that is? Yeah, this is Steve Robertson. Okay. All right. All right, and another one I hear. Not here this evening. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, great photos, guys, gals, all the way around. Um, there was just image after image after image that was like, oh, wow, this is really nice. So kudos. And kudos to the, real quick, like Joe, if I may, kudos sure. to everyone who submitted to the exhibition in Carlisle. Those were amazing. Um, I got to see it about a week after the opening and my wife and I went in and we were both just going like, wow, wow, over and over. So you guys did wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chip. Everybody would you unmute yourself, please, for a second. Uh, and we want to thank Chip for the uh, for the review this evening. It was very educational. That, that was great. Thank you. And also, we want to thank all those submitters who put the images in. Here, here. 
And um, so why don't we have a big round of applause both for Chip and for the submitters. Thanks, Chip. Thank you, Thanks, Chip. Chip. Thanks, Chip. Thanks, Chip. Thank you. Thank you, Chip. Thanks. Awesome. Indeed. Awesome Thank you. Thanks. Well, thank you, everybody. We're going to end the session now, and we'll see you uh, two weeks from now or at our field trip down at uh, the Strasburg Railroad. Thank you much. Bye now. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night everybody. Bye.